Tequila is the great equalizer of a night out, in that everyone's going to equally regret those four rapid rounds of shots they decided to do after midnight. How did you first hear of Candy Burris? Was it on an episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, a show in which she is a lead? Or perhaps you came by her music first, either when she was part of a girl group or was striking out on her own. Either way, Burris has been in the center of pop culture zeitgeist for decades, showing that she not only has what it takes to be a star, but also the staying power to hold onto it. The daughter of a reverend who was the son and grandson of bishops, Burris has wholesome, religious roots, as noted by the Christian Post. From her early life in Georgia to her reality television stardom, Burris has transformed from a young girl full of ambition and talent into a matriarch with serious clout and impressive means. So how is it that Burris came to be where she is today? And what happened along the way? Did she have to face any roadblocks? Read on to witness the stunning transformation of Candy Burris. As a child, Candy Burris was a saver. As a child growing up outside of Atlanta, Georgia, Candy Burris didn't exactly come from a family with tons of money. However, the classic late night at club unwise decision of the salt rimmed variety is far from the only face of this agave spirit. Delicious as they may be, margaritas, too, are only scratching the surface. A quality tequila can be just as fine a sipping alcohol as any scotch or bourbon out there. But that didn't quash her innate entrepreneurial spirit, which she nurtured from an early age. I was a saver as a kid, she explained to Money. The trick is to find out precisely which tequilas are the good stuff, and which ones are best reserved for those barely remembered early morning hours. That was my thing. I always wanted to make sure I had something, stashed away, you know? That budget-savvy instinct would come to benefit her later in life, too. Burris also has fond memories of spending time with her mother, while both of them would imagine what it would be like to be rich. They would drive around wealthy neighborhoods boasting large homes and think of what could be. What's more, an aspiring tequila enthusiast needs to make sure that they have reliable access to some of the better brands. In order to determine what the true delicacies of the tequila world are, and to ensure maximum access to them, we've taken a look at some of the most popular tequila brands out there and ranked them from worst to best. 10. We'd ride around all the time and dream, like, oh, one day we're going to have a house like that, she said. Montezuma One of the biggest tricks to tasting like quality alcohol is to avoid tasting like industrial alcohol. She added that, as an adult, it's a bit surreal that she actually can afford the home she once fantasized about. This should be pretty easy, given that very few human beings voluntarily seek out to sample the latter. However, a merest sip of Montezuma tequila gives the drinker a pretty good approximation of what that must be like. Montezuma Gold currently enjoys a less than solid average of 1.5 stars out of 5 on Master of Malt, with reviewers calling it horrible and lambasting both its taste and smell. Sometimes dreams really do come true. Candy Burris lost her brother when she was only 15 while Candy Burris' childhood was just like most girls. When she became a teenager, her family was struck by sudden and unexpected tragedy. Her brother, Patrick, passed away. This Montezuma Gold is the absolute worst tequila I have ever tasted, one review says. I. Taste is full of false sweetness and, could it be? Liquid smoke. Not bottom shelf just turned 15, and he was in Mexico in a car accident, she recalled on Escape Still Kickin' It, via Bravo's The Daily Dish. Not good enough for that. Oof. So, if you absolutely, positively need to have a margarita and Montezuma is the only tequila brand left in the store, perhaps you can minimize the damage by going with silver instead? Unfortunately, no. It was devastating to me. Patrick was 22 years old. How unbelievably sad. But just because Burris' brother had passed on, that didn't stop her from talking to him as often as possible. When I would say my prayers before I would go to bed, I would just ask God, would you please allow me to talk to Patrick? She shared on an episode of Candy's Wedding, via The Daily Dish. Sure enough, he would appear in my dreams. Burris would also pretend that he was still at school instead of having passed away, which helped her cope with the pain of her loss. As an adult, Burris often wonders what her big brother would have been like had he lived and if they would have worked together. The community reviewers at Tequila Matchmaker are, if possible, even more unkind to the see-through stuff. In fact, they've reported aromas ranging from chlorine to varnish and flavors from acetone to soap. Incidentally, if you find yourself reading all that and thinking, wait, isn't that what tequila always tastes like?
chances are you've only sampled bottom shelf stuff like, well, Montezuma. We're so sorry for your loss, Candy. Candy Burris signed her first record deal as a high school junior and got super famous it would seem that Candy Burris was destined to become a celebrity from very early on in her life. In fact, she was a founding member of a girl group called Escape as a teenager, which was quickly discovered by producer Jermaine Dupri. Let's see if that can be fixed. 9. Jose Cuervo If you're even vaguely familiar with the concept of tequila, chances are you know Jose Cuervo. Per the spirits business, the 250-year-old brand is the world's best-selling tequila by a pretty comfortable margin. We started our group when I was in the ninth grade, she revealed to Forbes. We got our record deal when I was in the 11th grade. Then the group dropped their first single just before her senior year in high school, and voila. They had a hit song. Thus began the adventure that would render Escape one of the top R&B groups of all time, with all three of their albums being certified platinum. Thanks to them, along with peers like Outkast, Atlanta became a musical hub, says Burris. We were definitely at the beginning of it, she told Variety. As befits its stature, the brand also has a sizable array of products out there, so, in all fairness, if you want a nice Jose Cuervo, you do have options. Apart from the higher-end stuff, Vinepair points out that the silver Jose Cuervo Tradicional Plata is a pretty solid budget mixing tequila. So, what does this super-famous brand do so low on this list? You can thank Jose Cuervo a special for that. There's a pretty good reason you shouldn't drink Jose Cuervo a special, the king of all, mixto tequilas, per the daily meal. Mixtos are, essentially, all the cheapo tequilas that don't explicitly mention that they contain 100% agave. Legally, such concoctions are fully free to fly the tequila flag, as long as they contain the legal minimum amount of blue agave, which is as little as 51%. LaFace had just moved to Atlanta in the early 90s, started their label here, and brought a lot of opportunities for a lot of people to do their thing. And the rest is history. After Escape dissolved, Candy Burris struggled with her confidence from 1993 onward. Escape ruled the R&B airwaves, serving up singles that frequently broke onto the Billboard charts. But after a while, tensions flared in the group, as the ambitions of its members began to clash. That made Candy Burris quite concerned. The rest tends to be a hodgepodge of cane sugar syrup and various additives that you might know under their common name, tequila hangover. Jose Cuervo Especial is far from the only offender out there, but is the most popular one, the blame for a great many unnecessarily awful Sunday mornings rests squarely on its shoulders. One of the group members wanted to go solo, she shared in an interview with Forbes. As such, its existence keeps the Jose Cuervo product family lower on this list than it otherwise might be. 8. Juarez While noticeably less merciless for the old taste buds than Montezuma, Juarez is still very much a member of the Oh God, What Did I Drink Last Night? family of cheaper tequilas. I felt like it was the end of the world. Given that she'd just purchased her first home, Burris was facing bills to pay, even though she was only 19 years old. That meant that Burris had to figure out what her next move would be, as the future was looking a bit unpredictable. To its credit, though, it doesn't pretend to be anything else. I didn't have anybody who could afford my bills at that point, she continued. Fortunately, with a lot of talent and a little luck, Burris was able to calculate which next step would be her best option for future success. Outlets like Total Wine and Sam's Club happily note that the brand is a bar and party staple that works great as a margarita ingredient. Since Juarez pretty much wears its mixed dough heart on its sleeve, there's little point in analyzing the higher nuances of its flavor profile, aside from perhaps a general note that it tastes surprisingly smooth, but still has that bottom shelf tequila punch. Instead, let's focus on the margarita aspect. As Sirius Eats points out, tequila is just one of the building blocks of a mixed drink, and some of the main mistakes when making a margarita are using subpar ingredients, like pre-packaged lime juice or, worst of all, margarita mix. Sure, you should ideally also use a great tequila, but sometimes things just don't roll that way. You know how the saying goes, if life gives you a bottle of Juarez, grab some quality ingredients and use it to make reasonably tasty margaritas. 7. In fact, one of her greatest accomplishments was still in front of her. Candy Burris won a Grammy for writing, No Scrubs, not one to give up in the face of difficulty. Once Escape was dissolved, Candy Burris and fellow group member Tamika, Tiny, Cottle decided to go into business making demo songs for record labels. Sousa you'll notice that the entry-level versions of Sousa tequila also distinctly avoid the words, 100% agave. 
While the brand does have full agave stuff at its disposal, the fact that it's an inexpensive tequila brand that dabbles in mixto territory keeps Sousa on the lower rungs by default. Even so, there's one important thing that sets it apart from the baser fare. Sousa happens to be very, very good for what it is. While the Sousa brand still exists firmly in the land of salt and lime, it's far from the worst mistake you can make at the margarita stage of the day. In fact, the Spruce Eats recently named Sousa Silver Tequila the best budget tequila for shot and margarita purposes. That was when their manager introduced them to the famed producer Kevin, Shakespeare, Briggs, and that's when things really started falling into place. When we met Shakespeare he played us this track, she explained in a chat with Forbes. We asked him if we could take the track and rewrite the song for it. And thus, the iconic 1999 feminist anthem, No Scrubs, was born. Once the song was recorded, it found its way into the hands of the legendary record executive L.A. Reid. I met him at a party and he told me that he was going to make this the biggest hit of my career, she continued. This doesn't mean it's necessarily delicious, for instance, Honest Booze Reviews is quick to make clear that Sousa Silver's aftertaste is only worth writing home about if all you're planning to put on paper is the word, ARG. Still, much as serious tequila aficionados may scoff at mixtos, the cheap brands will always be around wherever unwise drink order decisions are made at 2 a.m. Should you find yourself in that situation, you could do a whole lot worse than Sousa. 6. I took for granted what he was saying. No Scrubs went on to be recorded by one of the biggest girl groups of all time, TLC, as noted by NPR. It spent four weeks in the top position in the charts, and won Burris a Grammy Award. Candy Burris became a mom in 2002 In 2002, Candy Burris celebrated another joyful first in her life. She gave birth to her daughter, Riley. El Himador on paper, El Himador is a pretty decent tequila especially when you take into account that it's one of the best sellers not just stateside, but in Mexico as well, per spirits hunters. A hand-harvested bearer of the 100% blue agave, Mark, El Himador's flagship product is an award-winning tequila reposado with taste notes that include citrus and tobacco, according to the spirits business. In reality, though, the brand has a history of conflicting reviews. Unfortunately for both Burris women, the girl's father, Russell Spencer, didn't take an active role in their lives. Riley's dad and I, we never co-parented. El Himador Silver Tequila has been dubbed a fairly underwhelming two-star spirit by 31 Whiskey, while well over half of its influencer raters give it a solid five stars out of five. Likewise, the Reposado variety gets critical to middling reviews from Tequila Matchmaker. However, the master of malt community has surprisingly high praise for it. In the end, it all seems to come down to whether you're looking for a decent mixing tequila, in which case El Himador works just fine, or for straight drinking fare, in which case it may or may not be your cup of distilled agave juice. He never was involved, she revealed in an interview with E! News. Unfortunately for El Himador, our palate falls in the latter camp, but if you do get the chance to try the stuff, there's no reason not to, it's well ahead of bottom shelf liquor, and if you do end up loving it, it's affordable enough to make a pretty decent everyday spirit. 5. Hornitos tequila can be a divisive drink, and considering the whole 100% agave thing acts as a clear border between the bad and the good, it's easy to forget that some tequilas are simply alright. Q. Sousa's mid-shelf brand, Hornitos. Named after a process in which agaves are roasted in small ovens called Hornitos, the brand includes many of the usual suspects. The unaged silver of Hornitos Plata, the two months plus oak aged reposado, the añejo that has at least a year of aging under its belt, and a handful of specialties and pre mixed drinks. We would hear from him for a little while, then you wouldn't hear from him again for like a year. That's why Burris decided that it wasn't a good situation for their daughter, and she quietly dealt with that in a private manner. Fortunately, Burris found love again, and, for a while, was engaged to Ashley, AJ Jewel, who took an active interest in Riley's life. Sadly, he passed away in 2009 after an altercation in Atlanta, as noted by People, which devastated the young girl. The brand is completely missing a gold tequila, which, for reference, would be a mix of a silver and one of the aged tequilas. The All Agave Hornitos is, in many ways, the quintessential midlist tequila. When Delish listed Hornitos Plata among the best tequila brands, the reasoning was, essentially, that it's nice for its price. She cried so hard when I told her he passed, she told Zapiel. 
Complex has given it 3 points out of 5, noting that, all things considered it goes down well. As for the Reposado, Spirits Review has given it an incredibly middling review that uses the adjective, tired, more than once, yet the publication doesn't truly lambast the drink. In our opinion, these are all pretty accurate assessments. Hornitos is by no means bad, but it's far from great. He was the dad she didn't have, because her father really isn't in her life, so for her it was like losing a dad. Initially, Candy Burris didn't know if Real Housewives of Atlanta would be popular you might be tempted to think that Candy Burris would only get one chance at fame and that she peaked in the 90s. But that couldn't be farther from the truth, as she was selected very early on to be one of the stars of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, RHOA, which was a big surprise for her. When I first. In fact, the most accurate descriptive is probably. Fine, with the hesitant three dot stop very much a part of the sentence. 4. 1800 tequila When it comes to sheer versatility, it's very hard to beat 1800 tequila, a brand that makes the fact that it's just refined enough, a point of pride on its website. This is actually a pretty accurate description of 1800. Joined the Housewives 10 years ago. I did not know it was going to be as big of a deal as it was, and as, for me, she confessed in a 2019 interview with Variety. For the Spruce Eats, it's good enough to employ as a sipping tequila cheap enough to use in cocktails without worry, and smooth enough to soothe the stricken palate of a wary tequila drinker whose opinion of the spirit has been scarred by too much Jose Cuervo. I definitely didn't think that it was going to be something that would take up years of my life. In fact, Burris was coming at it from a musician's perspective, unaware she was about to become a bona fide reality television star. She thought she was just going to do the show for a year. But, of course, it turned out to be a completely, life-changing, experience for Burris, who's been on the show for over a decade. Candy Burris' wedding was an homage to coming to America after many years and several heartbreaks. Candy Burris finally found true love with producer Todd Tucker. Knowing this, it's perhaps surprising to discover that 1800 falls under the same corporate umbrella as Jose Cuervo, per 31 Whiskey. Yes, we realize this technically breaches our a special induced grudge on Jose Cuervo products, but we just can't stay mad at 1800. After all, it is just refined enough. 1800 is not the finest thing in the tequila world, but if you ask a genie for a bottle of nice tequila, this is what you might very well get. The pair met in 2011, got engaged in 2013, and tied the knot the following year in Atlanta, much to Burris' delight. It's made in a classic way and performs well in any and all tequila-themed scenarios out there. This is one of the best days of my life. I never imagined that I would marry my best friend, she gushed in an interview with In Touch, adding, and to have just had the wedding of my dreams, it's all been so beautiful. Burris and Tucker spared no expense on their wedding day, according to Bravo's The Daily Dish, sharing a report from In Touch. As such, if you only have room for one all-purpose utility tequila in your drinks cabinet, a member of the 1800 tequila family is a solid choice. In fact, the brand only ranks this low on the list because certain others outshine it, but not necessarily by much. 3. Espolin Yes, the cheap, seemingly unassuming Espolin makes it to the top 3. But then again, if you've tasted it, that should come as no surprise. If you're looking to combine a great price with great taste, the world of tequila can often find you wanting. In fact, the newlyweds reportedly forked over a whopping $400,000 for the event, which was an homage to the Eddie Murphy classic Coming to America. Not so with Espolin, which Liquor.com recently called the absolute best sipping tequila of the under minus $30 price group out there. So, what can you get for that comparative bargain price? Espolin's surprisingly complex Blanco and Fuller Reposado are both 100% agave, and though somewhat spicier and rougher around the edges than some high-end fare, they carry a signature punch that works very well in mixed drinks, something the brand's Facebook page takes full advantage of, as it bombards you with inventive and nigh-invariably delicious Espolin-themed mixology, Paste Magazine reports. The brand has a measure of smoothness, but for those who prefer their tequila with some character, Espolin Reposado in particular will give more bang for your buck than anything else on this list. 2. Burris wore a $20,000 Rico Chapel gown, custom-made, of course, paired with crystal-studded stilettos designed by Christian Louboutin. Even the cake was jewel-encrusted, with a price tag of $2,500. Don Julio look at any list of fine tequilas, and you're likely to find at least one bottle of Don Julio in there. 
talk about decadent. Naturally, the crowd was chock full of celebs, as was the musical lineup that guests danced to all evening. Congrats, you too. Candy Burris used RHOA to level up financially. One thing that Candy Burris was determined to do was make a profit off of her reality star fame. From Liquor.com's latest list of best sipping tequilas, Don Julio Añejo, to Delicious' recent listing of best tequila brands, Don Julio 1942, 2021 seems to be no different. What's the point of having this huge platform if you are not benefiting off of it? She asked Money, a true premium tequila brand, the makers of Don Julio openly call it the world's first luxury tequila, and it has the reviews to match. Drinkers praise the baseline Blanco for its fresh, restrained, distinctive taste, per the whiskey exchange, and the Reposado adds a little smooth sweetness in the mix, via Drink Hacker. 1942, of course, is a noted top-shelf tequila on the restaurant circuit. And if you want to go all-in, there's the super-expensive Don Julio Real, which one total wine reviewer has called, the Bentley of all tequila. All of this prestige and nuanced taste is enough to make Don Julio a great best-selling tequila. Good question, Candy. That's why Burris made a pledge to manifest her entrepreneurial visions and not fall prey to making empty promises. If I speak anything on that show and say it's something I want to do, it is a rule of thumb for me and my team, it has to happen, she continued. I am going to be a person of my word. Indeed Burris did exactly that, as she's now worth $30 million, as noted by Celebrity Net Worth, making her one of the richest real housewives. So, how on earth is it not topping the list? 1. On top of her annual RHOA salary of $450,000 per season, she also has a children's lifestyle brand, an intimate toy company, and several restaurants to her name. Patron an uninspired choice? Perhaps, but when it comes to best-selling tequilas, there's no denying that Patron reigns supreme. It might be the world's second best-selling tequila, according to the spirits business, but it's also very much the real thing. Per Esquire, Patron was in the front lines when premium tequilas started fighting their way through the spirit's reputation as a cheap student hooch. With a combination of careful pricing and an extremely solid product line, it has managed to maintain its street cred through the years. Some praise the virtues of the complex Roca Patron product line, and the brand has an ultra-special Grand Patron line as well, but even if you don't want to break bank, the baseline silver, Reposado and Añejo variations all hold their own. Granted, Patron's popularity and lengthy tenure as the top dog of premium tequila industry, as well as the fact that it flies under the Bacardi flag these days, has soured some enthusiasts on the stuff, as the Spruce Eats reports. However, when it comes to big-name tequilas, it simply has no equal. Though the brand is famous and thus can be somewhat overpriced, it's also delicious through and through. That's on top of the royalties she collects for, no scrubs, and, bills, bills, bills. Talk about diversifying your revenue streams. In 2017, Candy Burris went on an escape reunion tour in addition to all that Candy Burris was already doing, running her businesses, raising a family, and starring on a successful reality television show, when the opportunity came to once again go on tour with Escape came along, Burris couldn't say no. And as it turns out, doing so rekindled a flame she'd let dwindle. Patron Silver alone is a reliably enjoyable, smooth spirit that works extremely well as a mixer, and if you want to wean yourself off those chemical-tasting cheap brands, it's hard to find a better starter premium tequila to blow your mind. When Escape came back together for a tour in 2017, and all of our shows were selling out, it made me miss being on stage and producing music on a regular basis, she shared in a chat with Variety. That's what I did for most of my life. She added that being on tour was just as amazing in 2017 as it was back in their early heyday, when they were new to the world of success and celebrity. With the energy of the stellar reunion freshly under her belt, Burris decided she needed to return to her musical roots. All she needed to do was figure out the next step. Candy Burris made her Broadway debut in 2018 in 2018. Candy Burris made the next step in her career. She starred as matron, Mama. Morton in the wildly popular Broadway musical Chicago, a lifelong dream come true. I have been wanting to do Broadway all my life, since I was in high school, she revealed in an interview with Broadway.com. For whatever reason, I didn't pursue it as hard as I should have. So when the opportunity came knocking, she excitedly jumped at the chance. Interestingly enough, the way that Burris was offered the role was something of a fluke. She made an audition tape for a television musical, and she chose, When You're Good to Mama, as her audition song. 
but her agent liked it so much that he sent it onto the Chicago company, and they asked her to come in for an audition. Obviously she nailed it, as Burris graced the Chicago stage for a three-month run from January through March in 2018, as noted by Broadway Buzz. Candy Burris and her husband used a surrogate for their second child on January 6, 2016. Candy Burris and Todd Tucker welcomed their first child together into the world, according to Us Weekly. Their son, Ace, weighed 7 pounds and 6 ounces at birth after a safe and successful delivery, although the pregnancy was high risk, via bet. But when Tucker and Burris decided to have a second child together, they made headlines for their decision to use a surrogate, making Burris one of several celebrities you didn't know used a surrogate. Initially, their decision wasn't met with much enthusiasm, both from family members and the general public, as they were misinformed and assumed she was doing it for cosmetic purposes. Come on, honey. I got money to get my body back together if I need to, she proclaimed in an interview with Tamron Hall. It's not a vain decision. Tell him, Candy. Little Blaze Tucker made her grand entrance on November 22, 2019, weighing 8 pounds and 1 ounce, as noted by Entertainment Tonight. Candy Burris won season 3 of The Masked Singer before Candy Burris was a reality star, she was famous for her vocal stylings. But over the years, Burris put music on the back burner, partially because she was pursuing other avenues and partially because of what people were saying. I kind of lost confidence in my voice because I'd be seeing people posting and tweeting, oh, she can't sing. I hate her voice, and, you know, making jokes about me as far as like my vocals or whatever, she confessed to the griot. And so that stuff kind of plays into my head. You can see how that would have an impact on her. But once again, an opportunity came knocking that Burris couldn't refuse. She was invited to compete in The Masked Singer in 2020. Not only did she crush it on the show, but she beat out every other contestant to win first prize as the Night Angel. Congratulations, Candy. Enjoy the hater tears. Candy Burris says her brother is her guardian angel in many ways. Candy Burris has really undergone a stunning transformation, from a teenager with big dreams to a woman with an empire. But one thing that will always be the same for her is the love she holds for her departed older brother. I know in my heart of hearts, whether it's true or not, he's my guardian angel, she revealed to the griot. I have accomplished so much and so many great things have happened to me after his passing. That doesn't mean Burris believes his death had to happen for her to manifest her destiny, though. It's more that Burris knows that her brother is always watching out for her and has always had every confidence in her. If he were here, I know he would say, I told you you had what it takes to make the pros, she continued. Indeed she did, and, in 2020, her Bravo show Old Lady Gang was announced and she starred in the Kai.